Okay, here we are, part two. This is where we left off, okay? The reason we did this is so that I can give a quick sketch. So what's the equation here, I have up two, and I have right three. So if I want to graph that equation, which is what the, the problem is calling for, again, I'm just going to do some shifts here of my original hyperbola, and you always start the same. We always sketch our HA and our VA first. Okay, so write three, one, two, three, and that's going to give me my VA. And again, it's just a quick sketch. Up two, it's going to give me my HA. Hyperbola. There you go. That's what it is. Okay. Next. Uh, problem 5-17, find a possible function for the graph shown. All right, I'm going to get rid of all of this, so if you need it, you're going to have to uh, push pause and rewind. Now, I'm not going to erase the graph because I want to sketch the one they gave you in the book. So, 517. I'm going to get a quick sketch of what they have. And as I'm sketching it, you should be able to tell me what uh, those shifts are going to be. All right, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And it does this. Now, the key thing they want you to recognize here, first of all, where are your H, A, and B at? A little hard to see here because I've been doing a lot of erasing, but in your book, you can see that this HA, all right, is at 3. Or excuse me, 2, sorry. And you can see that this VA is at 3. So I need a right 3, and I need an up 2. All right. So Y equals 1 over right 3 would be X minus 3. Up 2 would be plus 2. But the other thing I've got to recognize is a normal hyperbola is always in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. This one's not. This one's in 2 and 4. That means I have to incorporate one extra thing, and that is a flip. Now, it doesn't matter where you put that negative. It should be in front of the, the numerator, or it could be out in front of the whole fraction. But there would be your best answer. Uh, if you need to read the math notes box, you're going to want to push pause right now and read a little bit about simplifying fractions. The old fraction busters from Al J and Foundations. So go ahead and push pause right now and check those out. here on 19a all right so what I need you to do there is take a look at that and if you read the math notes box you know that to get rid of a negative exponent we need to multiply by uh, a positive exponent uh, for that same variable so what you want to do is pick out your biggest negative exponent for x that's the x to the negative second so I'm going to multiply by x squared but if I multiply bottom by x squared I got to do what I got to multiply top by x squared okay to maintain equality my biggest negative exponent for y is y to the negative first. So I'm going to also have to multiply by y to the first. But if I do it on the bottom, i got to do it on top. All right. Now, the other thing people forget here is this is distributive property. I'm taking this whole thing, and I'm multiplying it by both of these terms. Keeping in mind, keep the x's with x's, y's with y's. So if I take this right here, multiply it over here, I have x squared, x to the negative first. I add those exponents together, because that's what properties of exponents say, I get x to the first. I have y to the first and y squared. That gives me y to the third. Plus, plus symbol doesn't go anywhere. x squared, and there's no x's there, so x squared. y to the first and y to the first is y squared. That's my numerator. Okay, if you don't know distributive property, all right, well, then we got other stuff to figure out. Here we go, same thing, still distributive. x squared, x to the negative second is one. y to the first and y to the negative first is also one. They cancel each other out. Leave the one there. It's a placeholder, it's gotta stay. x to the second and x is x to the third. y to the first and y to the second is y to the third. Now the tendency here is for everybody to get to this step and think that we gotta do a ton of canceling out. You're wrong. You can only cancel out if you have the same variable in every term. How many terms are in this statement? 
we have four. One, two, three, four terms. Okay, do all four of those have the same variables? Answer no, you cannot cancel anything out. And we will, uh, that'll be the conclusion there of section 512. Obviously you still have 19B. I want you to try that one on your own and check your work with me tomorrow in class. And 20 and 21 are a little tricky, so we're not going to do those here. We're going to do those in the actual classroom setting.